What's up everyone, it's Brandon. In this video, I'll show you how to build a dividend calculator in Google Sheets from scratch. This calculator will help you estimate your potential dividend income and portfolio balance after several years. In addition, the dividend calculator will include inputs such as annual contribution, starting principal, tax rate, dividend yield, price appreciation, dividend increases, and dividend reinvestment. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified of future uploads. It helps my channel and I genuinely appreciate the support. Now let's get started. Before we get started, I want to go over a couple of disclaimers. First, no calculator is able to accurately predict the future returns of any market. The calculator is mostly intended to demonstrate the power of compound growth within your dividend portfolio. Also, the calculator is not perfect because it doesn't yet include an option for a contribution schedule. It basically assumes that we're going to contribute annually just one time throughout the year. All right, so the first step is to create a new spreadsheet. As you can see, I've already done this. And what we're going to do is just title this spreadsheet uh, Dividend Calculator. All right, and then I'm gonna go down to the actual sheet and just call this calculator. And I'm calling this calculator because in the future, if you ever wanna have other sheets um, such as charts, then there is not a naming conflict. All right, so the next step is to add our header columns. We're gonna start with the first one, which is year. Uh, the next one is principal and our yield and then the yield on cost. And I'll explain these as we add the formulas. Oh, did I do that wrong again? Okay, then we have income, taxes, the after drip value, and we have the principal increase each year. And then we want to add the new balance at the end of the year. Okay, so I'm just going to adjust this column real quick. There we go. Now we want to add some values into our inputs. So let's just assume that we start with an annual contribution of $6,000. And I say 6,000 as an example because this is the annual contribution limit for the Roth IRA or traditional IRA. And then we have our starting principle. So let's just imagine that we go in and we initially start out with $10,000, all right? And the dividend tax rate is the amount of tax that's taken out and owed to um, on our income tax every year on our dividend income. So we will just assume that it is 15%. In fact, I'll say 0 0.00. Our starting dividend yield, we'll just use 3%. And the expected share price appreciation will go with 10%. So we'll just assume that uh, we have some sort of um, investment and every year we gain about 10% in its share price. And then same thing for the dividend increase. We're going to expect that every year our um, investment increases its dividend by 10%. There we go. In fact, I'm gonna do the same format. Why is that not working? So we wanna change these to a percentage. There we go. And this is also a percentage. We'll make this one a percentage. And these are dollar values, just so the formatting is consistent. Um, and then the last one is gonna be an input, or it's gonna be a, a checkbox so that we can toggle whether or not we want to reinvest dividends or not. And to do this, you go to insert, and there is a checkbox option. There we go. So now if you just click in here, you can say I want to reinvest dividends or no, I do not want to reinvest my dividends. So the next step is to add some outlines to make the uh, differences between the columns a little bit more uh, unique and distinct. So we're going to highlight 
all of these fields here and there's this little square borders box over here and if you just choose the first one it will put borders around all of your cells now we're going to do the same thing over here with the fields but what I'm going to do is with this calculator we'll assume that we calculate um, values for 25 years so we actually have to go down to row 26 so I'm going to go start up at the first row and column and go all the way down here to 26 and then again go up to the bordered box over here and click right there so now this makes it a little bit more obvious as to where everything's at okay so next up uh, we're just gonna add some color to it just to add a little bit of styling make it a little bit pretty before we get into the math so I'll choose the fill color and we'll just go with I don't know that color right there and then over here I will just use a different color we'll do like a light green color and there we go and then the last thing I like to do is select these columns that we're going to be using and I like to format these with alternating colors so I choose alternating colors and I just usually use the first one uncheck header because we didn't select the header and click done and then that'll make each row a little bit easier to read as we go along now I just realized that I missed one column so we're gonna add one column here we're just gonna say insert one column to the right um, we have to have a field for our contribution our annual contribution alright so now that we have this all the columns set up correctly I'm just gonna adjust these a little bit so that there's not so much space on the other side so we'll just shrink this down a little bit and I'll move this one over a little bit closer okay so for the year this one's actually pretty easy uh, we just select the column we're going to do an equal sign to create a formula and then there's a function in Google Sheets called row and you just add your parens and we're going to subtract one and the row function just tells us that we're returning row two and we just subtract one from two and what that does is it gives us a year and if we pull this down I believe it will fill in numbers for each of the years perfect all right so we're gonna do the starting value up here of our principal if you remember over here we have a starting principal of 10,000 and that is in uh, cell m2 uh, let's see is that m2 m2 so what we're gonna do is another formula over here and we're gonna say m dollar sign 2 now what the dollar sign says is that when we um, expand this down and change the values of, on the other fields it will remain a 2 instead of automatically incrementing from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 so it just makes it a constant alright so for our contribution we're doing the same thing annual contribution is six thousand dollars that's M1 so same thing we do an equal M dollar sign 1 and there's our contribution and this one we can actually pull down all the way um, and then the yield uh, we're coming over here we're at three percent that is m4 so same exact formula there we go and then um, I think that's it for our starting values all right so the next step is to uh, input the formula for our income so this is going to be the dividend income that our investment is paying us annually um, and the formula for this is pretty straightforward um, I've got the cell selected so I'm going to do another formula and the formula is simple B2 which is our principal times our dividend yield so column D so we're going to say D2 and there we go so if we invest six thousand or I'm sorry ten thousand um, dollars and the dividend yield is three percent then our income is going to be three hundred dollars and then the next step is to go look at our taxes how much is uh, Uncle Sam going to ask us to return to him every year from our dividends okay so our formula for this it's gonna be kind of similar F2 which is our income and we get a percentage so we multiply by uh, let's see it's M3 that's our dividend tax rate and we want this again the dollar sign and we push enter and there we go Uncle Sam wants $45 if our dividend tax rate is 15% so let's test this out let's go over here and say 
that our annual taxes are 12, there we go. If our taxes are zero, we pay nothing. Now we're gonna look at the principal increase. So again, we do another formula and we're gonna take our principal of B2 and we, if you remember, we are going to increase our share price by 10% annually. So we just multiply by M, uh, I believe it's M5. And there we go. So 10% of $10,000 is $1,000. And there is our principal increase. Now we're going to move on to populating the values in the yield column. So we're going to start off uh, by changing our input value for the dividend increase to zero. Uh, temporarily, we will just assume that our investment does not increase their dividend annually. And I'm doing this just to kind of demonstrate a point. So the formula here, and I'm just going to paste it in instead of typing it, is you take your starting yield of 3% and you multiply it by M6 minus M5 plus 1. And that's basically a fancy way of saying take the difference between the dividend increase and the price appreciation. Because if you remember, uh, as a stock price increases, the dividend will decrease. So we have to offset that. And I just add the one to make it a percentage value so that when we multiply, we get the correct value. Um, so let me push enter here and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. Oh, and okay, real quick, let's highlight this and make these columns a percentage. And then I will pull this down so you can visualize what the dividend yield looks like. So there we go. As the, um, I'm sorry, as the uh, principal increases, this is uh, M5 right here, the dividend yield will decrease. So, and like I said, in order to combat that, we need to bring this back up to 10% and look at what we have, 3%. So in other words, as our stock price goes up, the dividend yields, yield goes down, but the company says, okay, I want to increase my dividend. So when, when they increase the dividend at the exact same rate as the share price, the dividend yield basically stays at 3%. And of course, in the real world, your dividend yield is not going to stay exactly 3%. It might be like 2.9, 3.1, and it'll teeter. Um, but for the purpose of this calculator, if we increase the price, and the dividend increase by the same percentage, the yield will be consistent, which is what we want. Now it's time to calculate the yield on cost. So what I'll do is paste in the formula and push enter. And then um, I need to change this to a percentage. Otherwise it's just gonna be a decimal value the whole time. So the way this works is um, we'll start from the middle. A2 minus A1 in parentheses here just basically takes the year and it uh, subtracts one so that we can get a zero and then a one and then a two and a three. And we do this because yield on cost is based on the cost basis. It's based on what we initially paid for an investment and then the yield on cost grows over time as the dividend yield increases, or I'm sorry, as the dividend itself increases. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we take that zero, we multiply it by the contribution um, and then we end up adding in our starting principle. We always have to include that in the formula. Um, and that basically gives us our cost basis. So what we do um, is we take F2, which is our income, and we divide it by our cost basis. That's basically the formula for yield on cost. Um, and so that gives us 3%. So next we want to calculate our principle after uh, dividends have been reinvested and after taxes have been removed and calculated out of the uh, income. So I'm gonna paste in the formula and then try to explain this. So we're gonna take our initial principal for the year, which is uh, B2 in this case, and then we're gonna use a Google Sheets um, function called if. And basically we're gonna look at cell M7 to see whether or not this is checked or not checked. And in this case, if I go back to the after drip value, if we if the checkbox is checked for dividend reinvestment, then we have to include the, the dividends after tax. So we're gonna take our income, which is um, F2, and just subtract the tax value, which is $45. And if we do not have the dividend reinvestment checkbox selected, then um, we just 
multiply by zero or we um, add the zero instead. And there it is. So we had a starting principle of $10,000 and we made $300 in dividend income. We subtracted $45 because of taxes and our after drip value is now 10,255. Next, we wanna calculate the new balance that we have at the end of the year. Um, this one is relatively simple. So I'll paste in the formula. What we're doing here is we're taking the after drip value. So after taxes have been taken out of the dividend and we've reinvested the dividend back into our principal, we add in the principal increase, which in this case is $1,000 from column I2 or cell I2. And then of course we add in our contribution and those three together give us our new balance at the end of the year. Okay, last but not least, we've got to take our new balance at the end of the year and move it to the beginning of the year. So this is just a simple J2. All we're doing is inserting the new balance into the new year and just calling it the same as it was. So we're gonna grab the little box and pull it down and you won't see the values right away. But as I move, across and pull these values down you will see all the puzzle pieces fall into place and all of our values will begin to make sense let me just go left to right there's that one this one and then the important one right there okay as you can see all of our values are now calculating correctly okay so finally we need to actually test our dividend calculator so let's first of all just check out this balance after 25 years we're up over a million dollars and you can see that the yield on cost is uh, displaying correctly and after 25 years our yield on cost is 18.29 percent which is really really incredible uh, you can see our contribution from year to year you can see the starting principle you can see the principal increase as we go along so we started at 1000 uh, 1725 all the way up to here and our principal increase after 25 years is over $93,000 that gets added to our start to our starting balance each year. Absolutely incredible. So let's go over here and turn off dividend reinvestment. And here we go. See how much lower the balance is? 698,000. This just goes to show what the power of dividend growth investing looks like if you were to reinvest your dividends instead of spending them elsewhere. Okay, um, and I mentioned the tax rate. So if you're in a Roth IRA, um, the Roth IRA does not uh, uh, require you to pay income tax. So um, we can just say zero, and then that will no longer be factored in. I think we tested this earlier. You can see tax is zero here, and then you can see that the, the new balance is a little bit different than it was before. All right, so the other thing that we can test is the annual contribution so maybe um, you want to be a bigger spender and you want to contribute twenty thousand dollars every year look at your new balance you're at three million dollars and our starting principle maybe you want to start with one hundred thousand and there we go we've got a new balance of over four million dollars in fact that's almost five million and you can see the power of compounding even more if i were to turn this off 3 million, you can see right down here, the ending balance versus almost $5 million. Well, that's it for now. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more dividend growth investing and personal finance videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.